Now for a quick look at some of the other stories of making news this week. The battle to stop Asian carp from wrecking the Great Lakes. The Army Corps of Engineers finally came out with a report years in the making that has some options to protect the Great Lakes from these invasive species. The most talked about option to permanently separate Lake Michigan from the Chicago area waterway system could cost 18 billion dollars. All right, you can look at the science, you can look at the studies, but the question really is here, is the political will in Washington or even enough clout in the Great Lakes region enough to get support from Congress to pay for this? And I know that you talked to some of the Great Lakes governors well, yeah, um, it, this it, spring. It better be. This is the largest body of fresh water in the world. We can't, I mean, we have a responsibility to protect it. And, you know, we have no problem spending $18 billion or more on bogus green energy schemes. This is a true environmental issue here that we have an obligation to address. And this report was was weak. This report was, you know, sort of, well, maybe we should do this, maybe we should do that. And basically, the report supported just watching things for a few more years. Well, you, you can watch those carp swim right into Lake Michigan, <laughs> and then the lakes are done. $18 billion is not too much to protect a a resource of this nature. It provides $7 billion just in the fishing industry. Uh, huge payroll off of those lakes every year. How do you get the rest of the country to buy into that in terms of, of Washington, in Washington? Well, that's been our problem. I mean, I think our delegation has not been particularly uh, persuasive in getting the rest of the country to, to, to focus on this issue. And I think you compare uh, their effectiveness with, uh, with the, the, the Chesapeake region's uh, delegations, you look at the money that's been spent to, to restore the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland uh, and protect that water, which is not fresh water, it's, it's you know, connected to, to, to the oceans, but had its own uh, pollution problems, it, it, they just have been more effective about it. And, and for whatever reason, uh, legislators from Michigan and Wisconsin and Indiana and Illinois and, you know, other Great Lakes states have not been able to do it. And I, I, I don't think it's that uh, people can't understand it because they do understand it in, in the Chesapeake region. I think it's about their effectiveness. John Butt Boehner is a Great Lakes gov or a Great Lakes uh, uh, that's representative. Right. That's right. He's this from should Ohio. be a higher, um, a higher priority. I mean, John Kerry got $14 billion for it the tunnel in uh, in, uh, in Massachusetts in Boston I yeah. mean this is something that will affect the affect the entire country if those lakes are overrun by these these cars and bottom line they need, need to make a decision about what the best process is if it well, is the separation or if it is something else and then they need to move on instead of just gonna, saying all right well let's keep studying the study well, the separation is the surest way. yeah that's the mm -hmm. only way to, to be to be absolutely certain that this does not happen unless you want to tell people to start fishing them and eating them. Yeah, I but mean, then you start talking th <laughs> then you start talking about the shipping industry who's going to who yeah. uses well, that and, and you know and moving goods. So it, it is an entirely it's a it's something that we're still going to be talking about. All right, time to ogle shiny new cars in Detroit. The 2014 North American International Auto Show launches Press Week this coming weekend. It's the most influential auto show of the year. Vice President Joe Biden will be stopping by for a look. What are you looking to to see there, Nolan? There is going to be a new F150, right? Going to be a lot of trucks. <laughs> a lot of trucks. Despite no one's buying new trucks. This, you know, relentless push by the governor, governor, government to drive people into these little bitty cars. Trucks will still be the star of the show here because that's what you drive Americans a truck. want. You to drive, drive a truck, don't Thank you? Thank God for it this week, right? Right. And I mean, I can. I was just thinking on the way here this morning. I mean, when we get to the point where everybody's in these little battery-powered matchboxes, how are we going to get through 12 inches of snow and ice? <laughs> Got to have a truck. Looking like a true Detroiter. All right. So, <laughs> so what are you looking forward just to, to seeing, Steve? I just, I mean, I, I love the show and, and I love the, the whole idea of the new cars and, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of attention that we get during that week. I think one thing to, to keep an eye on is there are going to be a lot of people from Washington here next week, uh, a lot of cabinet secretaries. Uh, it, it reminds us of this whole n renewed interest in Washington, in Detroit, uh, and, the, and the financial situation here. I think we still need more confirmation that this is for real, that they're going to stick with us, that they're going to help us out uh, in, in every way they can. The show and the, the, the sort of attention from the cabinet secretaries and the vice president is probably a good opportunity for us to start asking some of those questions. And if you like, if you're in the media and you like cars, booze, and food, it's a... <laughs> 
three day. You get the all gorge. You can eat. It's a bonanza. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> It's a bonanza. And again, I mean, to the point of not only will people from Washington be here, the journalists from around the world, and again, we'll be seeing a lot of the stories of the bankruptcy of the city. And this will be, you know, this will be the first show that all these journalists are here and that we're in this in the bankruptcy. You know, the theme last year was Detroit's back. Yeah. Uh, the auto companies were back, and, and it was the first big show past, post uh, their bankruptcies. Now, with the city in bankruptcy, I wonder if the tone will be, be, will be different in some of the coverage. It'll be interesting to see yeah. how they spend that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, and the, the thing that everyone is talking about this week, the snowpocalypse or the snowstorm of the century or whatever you want to call it. I call it my kids were home an extra three days. <laughs> Look at that beautiful snow footage from right here at Detroit Public Television. Lots of snow, extremely cold temperatures. Does this just mean that we're getting soft, that we had a couple of really nice winters and we just can't handle this kind of snow anymore? No, I don't know. This is <laughs> I, it was never like this before. It's, this is colder than it's ever been, right? We, we, and, uh, they, there may be explanations for it, but we did just an absolutely terrible job <laughs> of clearing the snow and getting traffic going. <laughs> Even this morning, traffic was inching along four days after. There's I've ice. There's ice. It, there's, the there's still ice out there. And when it's too cold, the salt doesn't work. We have to go with that's sand. That's what they say. All right. Well, that's going to do it for my week. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week right here at Detroit Public TV. Take care. Business Leaders for Michigan is dedicated to making Michigan a top 10 state for jobs, personal income, and economic growth. Learn more at businessleadersformichigan.com. Funding is also provided by Delta.